this part is what rocked me this was the part that i wasn't expecting and this was why we almost ended up calling off the wedding okie dokes how does og do this i think she puts her leg up like this feels like i'm in a big brother diary room about to give my confessions but yeah hey guys um ogali wanted me to sort of share my perspective on how we met and more particularly is how was I able to navigate the idea of not being initially attracted to her? And what role did that play in us almost calling off our wedding? And I know in the past, like when we've shared this story, when I've shared this story, I usually start from when uh, the Holy Spirit woke me up at 3 a.m. to reveal her to me. But I'm feeling led to give some context behind um that situation so i can give additional clarity to why that situation happened i'm going to tell you guys about this in a second but um i'm going to go back years before that moment to when i was in university and so when i got to england um i feel like there was a culture shock reality shock i don't even know what it was but coming from Nigeria, I'd always felt like, I'll tell you, fine boy. I was a yellow guy. It wasn't hard to get babes. And so moving to England, there was like a rude awakening for me. How would I put it? I didn't feel short until I moved to England because there were like my insecurity sort of flared up when I moved because in that environment, there were more light skinned guys, taller guys, more handsome guys, in my opinion. And so for me, I didn't feel as valuable as I once was when I was back in Nige. And so one defining moment that happened for me was when I tried to speak to one girl at the club and, you know, the way she looked at me, like she didn't even say a word. She just looked at me up and down, like and she didn't even say a word. She just turned back. And that experience really damaged my self-esteem because even after she did that, I now walked back hoping that nobody saw that moment only to catch my friends laughing at me in the background being like look at this fake guy and people don't realize but that moment literally changed my life at that point i became very self-conscious i became very insecure um i didn't feel valuable i didn't feel like any girl would want to be with me you know why would you want to be with a short guy who you know at that time i was i was maybe overweight as well um you know so it was just a cocktail of madness <laughs> for lack of a better word so why do i share this story i eventually met a girl in i think 20 maybe 2007 2008 and she was like one of the most beautiful girls I'd ever seen. Funny story was when I was back in Nigeria, I'd seen her at the cinema and I remember just stopping. I was about to cross the street. And I remember just stopping thinking, who is that girl? Like, how can someone be this beautiful? And so we eventually met, cut the long story short, we started dating and, you know, for someone who had been through so much rejection since I moved to England, I felt privileged to be with her because I'm like, everybody is rejecting me. How come this one girl is actually accepting to be with me? And so what I didn't realize was for the first time in my life, this girl made me feel seen. You know, I felt invisible. I felt like I was short. Nobody was looking in my direction. I wasn't the smartest person. So there was nothing that made me stand out from the crowd. But when I started dating this girl, all of a sudden people started coming up to me saying, how did you get this babe? We're walking on the road and people are looking back like, oh my goodness, like how, how, how is this guy with this girl? And it started to feed an appetite in me that I didn't even realize was there. Uh, she made me feel seen. She made me feel like a bad guy. And so what I didn't realize was I was using her to medicate my insecurities. And to cut the long story short, it was a summer fling. If you've ever watched The Notebook, it felt like that. Like when we were together, it was amazing. The moment she had to move back to Nigeria, things just started to break. Uh, we lost touch. Um, she eventually broke up with me. I think the pressure of just being in night, having other people give her attention, have a feeling she cheated, you know, so... Um, it was, it was hard to let go of her. Uh, I remember I made one of the biggest sacrifices. My parents gave me money to pay for my accommodation. I used the money to buy a plane ticket just to go see her because she broke up with me and I'm like, no, if she sees me, like she'll change her mind, you know? 
And that was a really, really tough moment for me. And I struggled to heal from that moment because I've come to realize that whenever people go through a breakup like this, we tend to focus on how it ended, but not why it started. And so for me, I kept on focusing on how did it end? And the reason why that is important is because when you now go into subsequent relationships, you look for the things that worked at the beginning of that relationship that ended, hoping that this relationship will end differently. And what usually happens is that you end up attracting the same types of people because you haven't fixed the why you attracted them in the first place. Um, I, and I made a video about this recently um, on how so, um, on how Samuel almost made the mistake of choosing Saul twice because Saul was a product of Israel rejecting God. And he looked a certain way. He was taller than everybody. He was handsome. He was, you know, he was all these things. And when God rejected him, God sent Samuel to Jesse's house, right? And when Samuel saw David's older brother, Eliab, he reminded him of Saul. And he was about to make the same mistake because he was focused on how Saul ended and not why Saul started in the first place. And God had to check him saying, men look on the outward appearance, but I look at the heart. And so God was trying to fix why Saul started in the first place. And that helped Samuel pick God's choice uh, the second time because Samuel had made the same mistake. And so um, I struggled to heal because I kept on focusing on how it ended and not why it started. And so I went on a five to six year season where I just kept on trying to date the same uh, women and unknown to me, I was building an appetite for being with multiple women. And so it was a struggle for me to even settle down because as soon as I see this person or oh, she fits my spec and all of a sudden I'm seeing somebody else that looks better or when I'll meet other people that were finer or more be like, it made me feel more seen. And so it was just an unending appetite that could never be satiated, right? It's just like the flesh. You cannot satisfy the flesh, right? There's always going to be more. And so fast forward to 2013, my business was failing and I was in church like maybe a week before and they were like, you know, they were doing this uh, business conference in church at Daystar at the time. And I remember my friend just tapping me saying, I think you need this, man. Your business need, needs this. And I remember just making a mental note that, you know what, I'm going to actually come for this uh, conference. I'm not going to spend a lot of time here because it's just going to take more time to explain this part, but I'm just going to summarize the very next day, I get into church with a hangover because I'd been, I'd gone clubbing the night before and I heard a message that would totally transform my life. And in an instant, I literally came into church, one person, and I left a totally different person. I came in an alcoholic. I came in a womanizer. I came in a porn addict. Like there were a lot of things that I came in and I heard a message and it's like my eyes opened. It's like when Pastor Sam was preaching, I, I was in a trance and I saw myself speaking to a crowd of people. And for those who knew me back then, public speaking was a no-no. Like if you had asked me to pick between speaking publicly and getting shot with a gun, I'd have picked shoot, getting shot. I don't say, just shoot here, man, quickly, because there was a lot of anxiety. And so seeing that vision of myself sort of created a new belief. And I heard a voice tell me that if you keep on living the way you're living, you will never become that person. And so I say that story because that was the beginning of my transformation. And then in church, they had this cell fellowship where um, we would go every Sunday evening to help, you know, gather in small groups, grow, um, to grow our faith. Right. And so I remember, you know, the first time I walked into the cell fellowship. Um, and so maybe just backtrack a, a bit. I'd always been attracted to light skinned girls, right? Light skinned girls. I'd always told people that I was, I was going to get married to a Spanish mamacita, like half Spanish mamacita to be precise, right? Um, I even went to Spanish school. That's like, talk about putting your faith into action. I went to Spanish school because I was like, when I meet her, I want to be able to impress her with some Spanish, you know, to show her that I'm, I'm, you know, I, I can speak a bit of Spanish. Like I literally went to Spanish school for this. And so, um, I'd always just, believe that I was going to get married to a, um, a Spanish woman that looked like Kim K, right? Uh, because that was my spec at the time. That was the kind of woman that I wanted to get married to. So I remember coming into self fellowship and immediately, because for some reason, I had a feeling that my wife was going to be in this fellowship for some odd reason, thinking about it. Right. And so I get into fellowship and 
Ogale was the first girl that I saw and I was like, nope. I did a quick scan of the room. There's no light skin babe in this room. My wife is not here. You know what? I'm just going to do what I'm supposed to do here and grow my spiritual life because obviously my wife is not here. Now, I think over the weeks, you know, coming to fellowship every single Sunday, hearing her speak, you know, I remember having the thought, you know, hearing her one day and I'm like, man, whoever marries this girl is going to be a lucky guy. But it's not me though. Like I, I just, because she just didn't look like what I had envisioned. And the reason why I, I, I shared that story from, from the beginning is to give you some context into how my spec was shaped, right? A lot of people, you, you, you get on this journey. Somebody breaks your heart. You, you focus on how it ended, not why it started. You, know, you begin to look for the same experience and unconsciously what you don't realize is that you are creating an image an idol in your heart based on that breakup or based on that person right and so at this point i created an image in my heart that i didn't even realize i had um i had this image in my heart i'm like she doesn't look like the woman and it's funny my wife was there for nine months and i never saw her because there was an image in my heart that was blinding me from seeing her Anyway, fast forward, I get home one night and this is the part that I always start with when I'm sharing this story. So let's get into it. I get home late this day because there was traffic and I think I get home like 11, 11.30. I remember I was extremely tired and I'm like, you know what, it's work tomorrow, but whenever I wake up tomorrow is when I wake up, man, like I'm extremely tired. And so I go to bed and I remember it's like something tapped me. Like it was a physical touch. And I, I didn't understand what it was then, but now I know it's probably an angel, right? And I remember just waking up, started like, ah, I saw one in my room. And I reached for my phone to, to check and I'm like, what's the time? And I remember just seeing 3 a.m. on the dot, like it was 3.00. And I had the thought, I'm like, that's an odd time. Like what, what are the chances that the time I'm waking up is 3 o'clock on the dot? And I'm like, okay, cool. And as I am about to go back to bed, I hear my spirit pray. In my mind, I'm like, you got to be joking, man. I don't want to pray. I don't feel like praying. I'm not praying. And I literally just tried to go back to bed. And I kept on hearing pray, pray, pray. And I'm like, I don't want to pray. I've got work in the morning. I'm tired. And at this point, I think I debated whether praying or not for so long that when I tried to sleep, I was like wide awake. And so, you know, I was like, you know what? I might, I might as well just pray. So I get up and I start praying. I, I'm praying in the spirit, you know, just praying, praying. I don't think I even turned on the light. The light was off at the time. So I was just praying, praying, praying. And all of a sudden I hear, pray for your wife. I'm like, ah, God, like, I don't even have a girlfriend yet. Like, what do you mean pray for your wife? Anyway, I will obey you wherever she is. You know, I just start praying for her that wherever she is, she'll be good. We'll meet, blah, blah, blah. And all of a sudden, I hear Muiwa, what you want is stopping me from showing you what you need. And as soon as I heard that, I knew exactly what it was talking about because an image of Kim K just appeared in my heart. And I was like, huh? Like, and I knew that that couldn't have been a product of my imagination. Like, like that was definitely the Holy Spirit speaking. And so as I meditated on that, I was like, you know what, God, take away what I want and give me what I need. And as soon as I said that prayer, Ogala's face just appeared in my mind. And I always blot out this story, but she knows the, the full story. Like, I was like, I literally stopped praying. I was like, chill now. I remember I just, I just stopped. I was like, chill now. Like, like God, like, like how? Like, that's the testimony woman in, 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 a, in self-fellowship because OG could give, in my opinion at the time, the most simplistic testimonies that you could ever hear. I mean, she'll be like, oh, I just want to thank God. My hair was this long yesterday and I prayed and all of a sudden it just grew like an extra inch. Like, thank God, let's just pray. And in my mind, I'll be like, that's not a real testimony, man. Like, like sister OG, like, like, come on now. You know, she'll be like, oh, I was driving from work today and I just prayed for the Holy Spirit and he just said, oh, take this right turn. And I got to the house five minutes before I normally get to the house. I just want to thank God. I'm just like, babe, man, like, like this woman, like, this is not a real testimony. But I was a, I was a new Christian at the time. So I'm like, I'm not going to say anything. Man. But I was like, what kind of testimonies are these, man? You know, so I was like, that's testimony woman right there. Like, no, she's not my type. I'm like, ah, like, she's not light skinned. I thought like, God, you know, you know, you give me the desires of my heart now. That's another thing. That's another mistake we make. And I made a video about this because I've discovered that one of the strategies that the enemy uses to deceive us is that he will give us 
scriptures that are not incorrect but are incomplete, right? So, for example, the Lord will give you the desires of your heart. It's not incorrect, but it's incomplete because the entire verse says, if you delight in the Lord, then he will give you the desires of your heart. So another one is Romans 8, 28, where it says all things will work together for those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose, right? And so I was like, man, God, like this is, this wasn't my spec. And then he reminded me, he said, remember the prayer you just prayed? Like he said, take away what I want and give me what I need. This is what you need. And I literally stopped praying. I feel like I was upset because I'm like, this, this goes very counter to what I I have been used to. And now this is why I shared the initial story because Ogal is a beautiful woman. I couldn't see her beauty because I had created an image and an idol in my heart of what beauty was, right? Um, so whenever I share this story, I feel like uh, people always feel like, oh, like like your wife wasn't fine or whatever. Nah, she, she, she's beautiful. But the picture I had envisioned in my heart blinded me from seeing her beauty, right? And so I, I go back to bed. Um, I wake up the next morning and I'm like, hold on, was that a dream? And then when I recollect it, I'm like, no, 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 that wasn't a dream. Like it actually happened. I remember just laying down on my bed. And I'm like, you know what? Like what's the type of woman that I'm actually looking for? And as I began to juxtapose my, what I'm really looking for to Ogale, like I was like, check, check, check. And I'm like, oh my goodness. Like, you mean my wife has been here all along. I've been asking God to show me who my wife is and she's been here all along. I never even saw her. And, you know, all of a sudden the idea began to warm up in my heart. And one thing I realized was that for a lot of people, you know, you can be saved, but still have an unrenewed mind in your salvation. Let me explain it this way. In Ephesians chapter six, it talks about the full armor of God, right? Wearing the full armor of God as preparation for battle. And it talks about the helmet of salvation. The helmet protects the head. It protects the mind, right? You can believe that you are saved in your mind, but you also need the breastplate of righteousness and the belt of truth to complement because the breastplate of righteousness protects your heart. And so what had happened was, even though I knew in my mind that I was saved, my heart still needed renewal from my old programming to the new programming. And so, um, and I don't know if you shared this, but later on that day, I got my confirmation because for the first time ever, she ends up sending me a WhatsApp message. Like, what are the odds that the night where I have this encounter, the very day, that very day, she would send me a WhatsApp message out of the blue, right? Like, we had never chatted on the phone. We had never called each other. We had never texted each other. And all of a sudden, I'm at work and I get this message from someone who says they're Ogali. And I almost flung my phone because I'm like, oh my goodness, like... This is not a coincidence. Now to the attraction thing, right? Um, how did I navigate this situation? I feel like I was at a stage in my life where obviously this encounter that I had was so significant that I knew that she was the one. I knew that this was the one that God wanted for me. Um, it was a struggle because I, because I was the kind of guy when I was still in the world who if I liked the girl and my friends didn't like her, it was a done deal. Like my friends have to like you. I don't know. I, like when I think back at my life, like I was, I was, I was drunk, man. I'd like thinking like, what was I thinking? Like, who cares? Like, are you going to be in a relationship with her anyway? Um, so I think that was one of my fears that, Oh, what would my friends say? Would they like her? What would my family say? Would they like her? Because everyone sort of knew the type of babe that I dated. Right. Um, there was this particular spec that people knew me by. Right. So, and, and she was definitely different from that. So it was just, you know, how would people think about me? Like, what would be their perception and all that? And, you know, at this point, I just, I've always been stubborn. I won't say stubborn, but when, when, I, when I put my mind to something, like nobody can convince me otherwise, right? And so I knew that this was God's will for me. Um, and whether anybody liked it or not, this is what I was going to do. Um, attraction, the Holy Spirit showed me the, her, her potential because as a man, you are the groom because you are here to groom your wife. You are the husband man, right? You are not going to get the finished product. You are going to, um, you're going to receive the seed and then create and then nurture that seed into its full potential. And so I feel like that was one of the things that God told me was that there's beauty in this. You are here to nurture her. 
so that her beauty can be revealed right and he showed me a picture and I, i've kept it and i've been telling her about it right like like um anyway um i feel like that part of it i was cool with now this part is what rocked me this was a part that i wasn't expecting and this was why we almost ended up calling off the wedding because um when i told her you know what god i feel like god is telling me that you're my wife um one of the things that we agreed on was that we're not going to have sex before marriage where we weren't even going to kiss before marriage right and so as our wedding was getting closer i feel like we let our guard down and we started talking we started well i'll say me me i started like trying to figure out i was trying to figure out what our sexual experience would be like once we eventually got married and so i'll make certain comments you know of what i liked you know and i remember one day we were having a conversation outside of a house and um i must have mentioned that you know what um i like having sex when the light is is on and you know just you know the ring high school ring tone <laughs> there was the kind of sounds that you know i would hear where i where one of the things I would, that i looked forward to as well as part of a sexual experience and ogali was like why would anybody have sex with the light on and plus why is anybody going to be shouting and making sounds and whatever and guys like something broke in me that day because i feel like the, att- the attraction bit i was like cool with but i'm like not that i was cool with it i was like i'm going to learn to live with this like god has already shown me that there's beauty in this and you know i just need to nurture her and everything but i'm like my sexual experience too like that's like two things i'm going to have to deal with and so because now let me let, let, let me explain why this was a problem for me because i had been a porn addict i've been addicted to pornography for over 10 years one thing most people don't talk about is that not all porn produces arousal in the audience, right? It's really for porn addicts, right? There there are certain types of videos that you watch that arouses you. It's not everyone that actually arouses you. And so for me, one of the things that got me was facial expressions and sounds. And so what did OG say? Why would the light be on? I won't be able to see your facial expression and why would I want to make noise? I won't be able to hear any sounds. And so it just felt like it was going to be a boring experience. Sorry, guys. I don't know if it's TMI. But, uh, oh, you say I should be real. Anyway, so um, all of a sudden, the image I had in my mind of what our sexual experience would be got shot. Like, it, I was like, yo. All of a sudden, I began to overthink this thing. That was an arrow that the enemy shot at my faith. And I began to meditate on these lies that he was giving. And all of a sudden, like everything just changed from being so convicted and so convinced that this was my wife. All of a sudden, I began to doubt. I began to think that, oh my God, like, is this actually the right decision? And again, this is why a lot of people, they'll say, how come God said, but what God said, we never saw or it didn't happen. Because God's word never fails. It is the soil that God's word falls in that determines if it actually produces a harvest or not. God already told me that Ogale was my wife. If we weren't married today, it doesn't change the fact that she was supposed to be my wife. It just means that it fell on the wrong soil or the enemy came and stole the word of God from the person's heart, right? I remember my whole mood changed and she could just tell that there was something wrong. And I was at the point where I couldn't hide it anymore because I was just getting snappy. I wasn't really happy. You know, she'd come over and, I, you know, it, it just wasn't who I, like, something had changed. I wasn't the person that she she had come to, you know, um, know and love, you know. So at some point I was like, I'm going to have to tell her. Like, I cannot keep this. This thing is eating me on the inside. I need to tell her, man. And so I remember just telling her, you know what, I'm coming over to your house. I think we need to talk. And mind you, I, I think she has spoken about this. Uh, she had an ex who God had told them that, you know, you guys are supposed to get married. And all of a sudden, it didn't work out. He had cold feet. And so in my mind, I'm like, oh, my goodness, I'm doing the same thing that this guy did to her. I don't know how she's going to take it. In my mind, I was expecting a slap. I was expecting abuses, curses, like I was just ready for the worst because I was like, I'm not going to keep this thing in my heart. It's killing me. I need to share it with her. 
And so I remember calling her and just telling her, you know what, this attraction thing is actually um, a, a thing for me. I feel like at that time, I didn't even realize that her comments from the other, from that the comments she had made at that time was, was what actually um, created this doubt in my heart. But I summarized it. I feel like the enemy had put it on the attraction. And so I was like, this attraction thing, I feel like the enemy is really attacking me, is attacking my mind. I'm beginning to have doubts about this marriage and everything. And as soon as I said that, I ducked because I was like, I was expecting a slap. <laughs> but, you know, what she did next, I think, um, it really, really touched me in a way that um, I wasn't expecting it, right? Um, she took it. She, she heard me out. And all of a sudden, I heard, let's pray. In my mind, I was like, what do you mean, let's pray? Like, what? Did you not hear what I just said? And that moment, I think, became a defining moment for us because it made me realize that I can be vulnerable around her. She prayed for me and she said, you know what, obviously the introduction is in a week, so I'm going to need a solid yes in the next few days. Take all your time. But obviously, if we need to cancel anything, we need to cancel it ASAP, right? And she left. And I remember just driving back home and I was like, oh my God, what a donut, right? Like, 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 why did I do that? Like, this is the perfect woman, like a mature woman. I don't think, I think 99% of women wouldn't have reacted like that. She responded, she did not react. And there's a verse I want to quote here. First Corinthians 13, 11 says, When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. Now, what that verse shows us is children react. Children speak before they understand, right? It says, when, a child, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood. They, they, they speak before they understand and they understand before they think, right? But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Men, mature people do the opposite. Mature people think first. They think first before they understand, before they speak. And so I feel like that's what OG displayed in that moment or she displayed a moment of maturity where she wasn't going to react she wasn't going to speak before really understanding it's like she took her time and i realized that yo if i miss out on this girl i'm never going to be able to replace her right she's irreplaceable and so what i like to tell people is especially for women is you need to become a safe space for your husbands every man is going to test you at the beginning of every relationship to see what you can handle because it's going to determine if he's going to trust you or if he's going to keep you in the dark. There are a lot of women who say he never talks, he never talks. Yes, because the, the, the time he spoke, you mismanaged the information that he gave you. You mismanaged the secrets that he shared with you. And all of a sudden, you didn't realize that there were bigger secrets that he had that he had suppressed and he wants to share with you because those are the moments that will build intimacy. Those are the moments that will build strength, right? Um, and so that was a moment that solidified our foundation in our relationship because that was a very tough conversation that we had. And our ability to manage it, you know, gave me the ability to trust her. And over the years, that just grown because that was just the start, man. I had a lot more that I wanted to share and she became my safe space. And, and I'm like, you know, how did I go from having doubt to then being convinced enough to eventually get married. I had to go through a healing process within those few days that she gave me, right? Uh, I think number one is I had to become self-aware. I think that was a moment that I realized that a lot of people focus on how the relationship ended and not why it started. And the Holy Spirit took me back to why that relationship started. And it showed me how I was using that relationship to medicate my insecurities. I wasn't, I wasn't happy with myself. I wasn't secure in my identity. I saw being short as a disadvantage and not as an advantage. God made me perfect in who I was. Like he, he has made me perfect in who I am. Like if I was any taller than I am, like I wouldn't be able to fulfill the purpose for which he created before. He has created me uniquely for the assignment that he has for me. And so he had to show me that, you know what, you are perfect the way you are. Don't wish you were any taller. Don't wish you were any finer. Don't wish you were any fairer. Don't wish you were anything than what you are right now. And here's why. Because if you are not able to accept yourself for the way you are, you won't be able to accept others. If you don't accept what seem like flaws in your life, you will not be able to accept other people's flaws. And I realized that I was superimposing my insecurities on her. Attraction can grow and attraction can also fade. You've been in so many relationships where you've gotten your type. Why has it ended? Weren't you still attracted to them? I was still attracted to them, but there were certain characteristics and certain character traits and qualities that they had that all of a sudden didn't make them feel as 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 beautiful as 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 they were when I initially met them. 
And so what God was trying to tell me was attraction can grow. Attraction can also fade. If I give you the, 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 the spec that you, that you like, it's no guarantee that you will stay attracted to that person. If that person cheats on you, all of a sudden, the person that you were attracted to begins to look ugly because of their flaws in, in, in their character, right? Um, I remember when we moved to Canada and, you know, we bought our first house. We were so excited, you know. We, we just bought our first house in Canada. The moment we began to, you know, spend money on fixing up the house, all of a sudden, the, the excitement of buying a house suddenly be, be, became hate and disdain. Because the price that we we're paying on the house suddenly became more than what we we're expecting to pay. And the same way with relationships, because when you get married to someone, someone that you're attracted to, all of a sudden, when, when you begin to fight and you begin to have disagreements, the price that you begin to pay for that relationship begins to outweigh the attraction that you initially felt for that person. And so something else that the Holy Spirit told me was how attractive is your purpose together? You guys coming together for the kingdom to produce something, a vision and a purpose for your marriage. Like how attractive is that? What can your union produce? What is your vision going to look like coming together? Yes, you can get married to someone who you're attracted to. And the only, the only thing that person is good for is that when you go out, people look at you. Is that a vision that is worthy of marriage? Is that a vision that is worthy of a kingdom union, right? Yeah, yeah, king and queen coming together. Is that is that what is 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 that is that the beginning and the end of this? And something else was how attractive is she in other areas? I met Ogale as a multi-business owner, a very down-to-earth, spirit-filled person. Um, she could bake, she was nurturing, she was a whole lot of things. And God was trying to tell me, like, this is the enemy trying to give you a scarcity mindset. In the same way in the Garden of Eden. You know, God said, freely eat from every tree, but don't eat from this tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And all of a sudden, they began to focus on what they couldn't have rather focusing on what they already had. And so God had to change my mindset from focusing on what she didn't have to focusing on what she did have. And I know in the last video, she spoke about how I was broke when we got married. Imagine the effrontery of this guy who didn't even have money. You know, coming coming here to be saying I have a spec. Like like when I think about it now, I'm like, oh my goodness, like dude, like how self how selfish and self centered were you? Where you weren't even looking at your own inadequacies, um, and you were, you know, it, it was just an eye opener for me. It's like don't focus on what the other person doesn't have. Why don't you focus on what they do have, right? And she had a lot. She had a lot. And you know, um, another question he asked me was how important is attraction to the success of a marriage? right? Um, attraction is like 5-10% of a marriage, right? The majority of what is going to um, ensure if your marriage is going to be successful or not is how you communicate. Is one person listening and what are they hearing? What are they hearing when the other person is speaking? How do you manage conflict? How do you manage finances? You know, um, how are you going to manage the kids, your, your, your time? There are, there's more there is way more that goes into a marriage and making a marriage successful than attraction. Attraction plays a very, very insignificant role um, in that. It may play a role when you do get married, but to stay married, it takes a different set of, 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 of traits and, and qualities to do that. Final thing he said was that your experience of sex was wrong. You have gathered the wrong experience for the right person. And he said that whatever you meet in marriage is what you have. Focus on what you have and grow what you have. Don't wish that you had something that you had in the past. Whatever you meet right now, because you weren't supposed to have sex in the first place until you got married, right? And so you have corrupted the idea of sex in your heart. And so there has to be a mind renewal that helps you to fix what has already been corrupted. And so that was my mindset going into it. I'm like, you know, whatever we find in there, we're going to make it work. And that's the mindset to have if you're actually going to succeed in marriage. And so I, I think in closing, like I almost missed out on the best thing that has happened to me since receiving Jesus Christ into my life because I had created a Frankenstein in my heart. You know, a lot of people, and I'll close on this, a lot of people, they date multiple people and they don't see the difference. They see it as, Oh, I'm just checking out the market or, 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 you know, dating multiple people is not, is not dangerous. 
what happens is that when you date multiple people, you begin to pick the best qualities in all of these individuals and you create what we call a Frankenstein. It's an image in your heart of somebody who doesn't exist. And you keep on looking out for this person that doesn't exist, an image that you created in your heart that you will never be able to find. And when you do eventually get married and it doesn't align with that picture that is in your heart, you always feel like you settled and you always compare them to that image and you'll never be able to get the joy that marriage and your partner is supposed to give you in marriage, right? And so I almost missed out on the best thing that's ever, that's ever happened, that's ever happened to me because I had a Frankenstein in my heart that I didn't realize the enemy had built in there to delay God's purpose, um, for, for my marriage. Um, I've said a lot, geez, I think this has gone longer than I expected it to, but what I would say is OG wasn't my type when we got married, but she's my type now. Like I see other women. I'm like, I wouldn't trade her for any one of them. Like all the things that I was complaining about are the things that actually make me attracted to her now. And so if you're struggling with attraction, trust me, like God is more interested in his purpose for your life than he is your preference. Purpose over preference. When God was going to pick the father of many nations, you know, based on our limited understanding, we would have gone for a young guy, somebody who had a lot of time on his hands, right? But God went for Abraham and, and Sarah. Reading the Bible in all the ways that we expected God to show up was very different from how God actually showed up. And so if you have a spec, you're just setting yourself up for disappointment because when God comes and shows you who he wants you to get married to, it's usually going to be counter what you were expecting in the first place. I'm a bit um, disappointed that I, that I wasn't able to give OG that fairy tale intro. You know, when, when you meet your fiance for the first time, or your husband to be, you want him to be attracted to you, you want him to, you know, to be swept up off, off his feet. I'm disappointed I couldn't give her that, but at the same time, I'm happy that that happened because that helped us to um, to build a solid foundation. We had difficult conversations early on that set our marriage up. To be able to have those conversations without feeling like I'm going to be hurting somebody else's feelings, it has made us stronger. And so I'm hoping that this has helped. But yeah, thanks for watching. And I guess what you will you see you guys on the next video. Take care, comment, subscribe, like. And she will see you on the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.